Okay, good morning. I've got an absolute cracking uh, video for you again today. I know we're all in the middle of a lockdown and everything, but I have managed to buy a van full of stock. It was delivered yesterday and I brought it down this morning to the shop for you to have a look at. And if you have a look at these photographs, I've got a full car. You really ain't gonna wanna miss what's in this. Paid 600 pound for the car full or van full of stuff that was delivered yesterday. And I'm going to give you a look through all of it this morning. Um, before I do that, I got a few other bits I want to show you. I bought myself um, a tool for holding my mobile phone and providing light when doing vlogs. Uh, really good to, little tool, and it was really really cheap. So I'm going to show you that. So anybody who uh, does internet and blogging and YouTube and that, it's a really handy bit of kit. Um, and I've also been buying on the internet again, and I got a few pieces by there to show you. So all in all, it's going to be a really interesting film today. So make sure you stick around. Okay, so this is the instrument I was talking about. So it comes with a, a ring light, holders for your mobile phone in the center, so you can stand in front of it. You can change the settings on the light. Um, you can make it brighter, darker, change the color even. So on an adjustable tripod stand, it also comes with a tabletop stand, a Bluetooth remote control so you can connect it to your phone so you can take photographs if you want to do photographs and things. Um, but yeah, this wasn't expensive, it was something like £30. Comes with these little settings here, so let's have a little look. Let's make it dimmer in a minute. So you can see there it's changing the setting and back up. And you can change the colour. Yeah, blue, white, orange, yellow, it's loads of different colours. I like the white. That blue mind might be interesting for filming. So yeah, uh, nice little tool. It was about £30. It's called a ring light. I'll um, splice in a link um, in the description to them if anybody's interested. Really handy bit of kit for vlogging. Now I don't know about you if you're doing YouTube videos, but a lot of the trouble I have when I'm doing things and showing you stock, it's never bright enough to see the stock. I'm always struggling with light. So this ring light is really good and helps. And stumbled on it by my daughter-in-law actually having one to do her makeup and her TikTok films. And I thought, that's really cool. I want one of them for when I do my vlogs. The downside with it is I have to take my glasses off, otherwise they become a bit of a mirror. So anyway, moving on. They were handy if you're into vlogging and things. I'm going to show you some of the things I've had off eBay this week. Um, I've got a load shipped on the way that I'll put into another video. But um, i got three items have actually arrived. So I'm going to show you what they are. Now we're going to start off with this. It's quite special. Absolutely beautiful. It's a toddy ladle or punch ladle. It's 18th century. This here was described as a black handle. It's actually whalebone twisted steamed and twisted whalebone look at that look at the light helping the the image now uh, we have a coin silver bowl it's not hallmarked but it is 100 percent silver it's got um some initials on the front here i don't know if you can actually see them because of the light reflection <laughs> but it's in spectacular condition really really nice piece now you're talking this is probably late 18th very early 19th century this beautiful whale bones in good condition, no damage, no holes or repairs to the silver, nothing. This cost me $29.99. Now if you have a look here, you'll see comparable examples with the whale bone handle and the silver bowls. They're asking £150 and £200 and things like that. Crazy money. £29 in perfect condition. That's going straight up on the website. It is a beautiful thing. Um, Obviously, they didn't know what they had when they sold it. Just calling it a black handle. Maybe they didn't want to put whale bone down for eBay. I don't know. Um, but steamed whale bone, sterling silver. I know it's not right now, but this was 18th century. And I'm not going to allow history to be destroyed. This is a beautiful object. And this isn't a small one either. So I'd say it's 14, 16 inches, something like that, I guess. It's a fair size. So that was the first. That's mwah, beautiful. Um, that's probably going to go up for about 150 and match him with everyone else's prices on eBay on the website. So for £29, but it, I tell you now, the quality is there. Bang on. 
Next, I bought two Chinese porcelain plates off eBay, and I'm not kidding you. The description read antique China, sorry. The description read antique Chinese porcelain plate, possibly Qinglong period. I know nothing about Chinese, but I found comparable examples, and that's what they were. So no returns, make your own mind up. That was the description. Now, to do that is crazy because there's so many copies and printed transferware uh, plates that copy in the 18th century style. It's crazy, and they scared a lot of people off. However, in this case, they were right. They were both 18th century plates, and I paid £20 each from. This is the first one, and this ain't Ching Long. This is the first one you have this beautiful uh, peony flower in the center here, this nice little border. Um, it's got the brown dressed rim. And if you look to the back, it's got this very mild um, decoration. Now I've already explained in another video that they stopped doing that by about 1740, 1750 thereabouts. So we already know this one predates that. But when you look really close at the color of this paste, I'd say this is a Yong Chen example. Um, not Kangzi, but it's Yong Chen in my opinion. It's really good quality. It's got a couple of tiny flea bites. Uh, I mean, almost rim fritting if you like, to the brown dress in. Those two there, that's it. And you can see they are tiny. It's almost like just a rim frit. No cracks, 20 pounds for a Yong Chen period. Early, eight, uh, first half of the 18th century. Uh, Chinese porcelain for £20. That's going to be £75, £85 of anybody's money, no problem whatsoever. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful plate, nice, nicely painted. So I'm really pleased with that. These little panels here separated by this border. It's just a really good plate. This brown dress in um, Café Lat or Brat Bratava, whatever Brat... Batava is something like that it's called. Uh, my pronunciation is never very good. But beautiful quality plate. Nice ring to it and all. So that was the first. So £20 there. Same buyer. Same description. Buy at your own risk. So they must have scared a lot of people off. Was a Qinglong period plate. Now this is a very typical Qinglong period. Um, you got the peony flowers again. I, I'm assuming peony. Uh, this tip, very typical border. Lovely blue hint to the uh, glaze. There's the shape. There's your skin tone on the um, porcelain. It is what it is. This is 1760, 1770 thereabouts maybe. A little bit either way. Beautiful plate. No damage. It's got rim frit in all the way around that you'd expect. That's why they put the brown dress in on to try and protect the, the edges earlier on. Uh, well, there was two reasons. One, to simulate the bronze of the Ming period and the other to protect the, the edges from fritting. But again, another beautiful plate. It's not going to be as expensive as the other. Um, to be honest with you, the other one could probably go anything up to sort of 85, 95, I would think. And this one's sort of 65, 70 pound thereabouts. Two really good plates for 20 pound each. And I'm being very careful, I'm not buying anything with cracks. It's all good condition, 18th century Chinese porcelain to be resold. So that's my three eBay buys that have actually arrived this week. I've ha actually bought another six or seven that have, are on their way. And uh, I got outbid on three or four. I was bidding on a mouseman stool. I bid 270 on that and it went for like 400. Um, there was a Qinglong Famille Rose panel and I was the high bidder all the way up to the last five seconds at £320, I ended up going for five and a half hundred and I was the high bidder on an 18th century, sort of 1770 Qinglong period charger. This was a 14 inch charger, really spectacular. I, I bid up to th sort of 340, 350 and he went for five and a half or four and a half, something like that. So I was quite a way off on that and all. I'll splice in images of those two by you now, just so that you can see what I mean. They were quite spectacular. Um, but shall I get to showing you what I've had? Now, I was I contacted uh, a dealer friend of mine 
that I know who works the markets and really relies on the markets. And I said to him, look, if you need to, just give me a shout and I'll buy some stock off you because I know you can't get to the market. And he texted me back, he said, yeah, that'd be absolutely fabulous. He put together a van load and delivered it to me and it owes me 600 pounds. I know that's a lot of money and it's more than a lot of you would want to spend on a job lot. However, I've had 10 boxes of railway honor. I'll show you that in a minute. And by boxes, I mean banana box size. So you'll see what I mean. I've had some mid-century glass. I've had some models. Um, I've had some spectacular stuff. I'm gonna give you a walk through it all now and I guarantee you're gonna enjoy having a look at this. I'm gonna keep the specials to last, but I've got some spectacular specials that you're gonna absolutely adore. But let's take a look at the railway bits first. Okay, so I got 10 big boxes of this stuff. Should we have a little look at it? It contains no trains at all. Um, it's all parts, really. It's buildings, it's, you know, all the stuff that you'd uh, have out on the sides. I don't even know what's in this one. It's all accessories and buildings and things like that. Um, there are some carriages and parts of carriages and things like that if you want to do restorations. Um, you know, lots of stuff like this. There's an entire box of that there. Eh? There's kits for building bridges. You got all the shed stuff here for building the sheds, trees. In here you got all the transformers. This was actually full. It's fallen over. It was all different couplings and things like that. Switches. I've got a Pick it all up by half and tidy it up. There's literally everything in here. I think it's signal boxes, I said. I'm not sure, I'm 100%. Now, some of this stuff is going to be big money. I'm not going to split it, I have no intention whatsoever of splitting it. Now, this is a trash turntable, however, in the box there is a good turntable. Now I know on eBay these triangle turntables are like 40, 50 quid on their own. You got track. I got a load of models in here, aeroplanes and things, and bits of railway bits. Uh, what's that? That's that looks to be brand new in the box. All the brick uh, moulds and that. Stations there. All this lot here. I know there's motors, uh, little motors and things that are brand new, still sealed in the box. Um, yeah, I'll get into some. No. Yeah. So there's like little motors like that. You know, if you was to put something like that on eBay, you're talking money. This is a dream, I would imagine, for somebody who deals or restores Hornby and Triang trains. But there's 10 crates of this stuff. I would imagine it's worth two or 300 pound for the 10 crates, it's gotta be. If I was to take like that little motor, that one motor out of this box here, that's probably 10 or 20 quid on his own. And look at it, you've got a box full of the stuff. Over here you've got all the, um, you know, the turntables like 40 quid, you've got all the roofs and things for the sheds. There's a lot of money's worth by here, I think. Um, but my thinking is, rather than breaking it down, because I'm not interested in doing little jobs like this on eBay, this law will get put aside, I'll either have an offer on it off another dealer or we'll go down to auction as soon as the auctions reopen and I'll put it in as one job lot and see where it goes but I would imagine it'll go somewhere two to three hundred 
for the 10 boxes. I think you'll agree that they are quite special. Uh, they're a specialist item. However, I do believe that there's a lot of money per year if you was to sit down and actually sift through it and sort it out. Every little coupling and things like that, you know, is worth money. If you're a train dealer and you've bought in a selection of trains and they're missing one or two parts and I've got them here, do you know what I mean? This is a gold mine. Moving on, we're going to look at some, well, the rest of it now. This next one you're going to love. Look at that. It is a tacky, Otaki uh, Enterprise, the world's largest atomic aircraft carrier, 1 to 400 authentic scale. This is the big red box version. Now these are on eBay. And they're asking over 500 pounds. Take a look at this. It's never been built. It is still sealed in the packets. It's complete. The motors are in there. The motors and that are still in you. Everything is in you. It is a complete set. The only thing he said is missing out of this set was the instructions. And I am going to download a set of instructions. But these are actually on eBay. I'm going to splice in a photograph for you in just a second. It's only one on eBay, and it's over £500 they're asking for it. For this single model of the Enterprise. Kit number OTI47. Shocking or That's a website item. I'm going to see if I can download and print off the instructions myself. And just say it's replacement instructions. But it is a complete kit. It's gone through, there's nothing missing, and it's just a really rare item. So already, for my £600, I'm looking good. Um, two or £300 for the train stuff. I'm probably going to ask £350, £400 for the aircraft kit, aircraft model, uh, you know, battleship. Um, so already I'm probably looking money back out of the bag. This is, I can't even pronounce it, Zasen House Coffee Grinder, number 531. Now the chrome needs a good clean. It's all there but it's a bit monkey. Um, but there's no damage, this wood is in lovely condition as you can see. It's nice, it's mid-century. It's actually in good condition apart from this needing cleaning. Now I've looked up on the internet and the way to clean chrome is to use an aluminium foil because the uh, aluminium is softer than the chrome and it'll clean it up. So I'm gonna try that. I might even film trying to clean it up. But these coffee grinders, the cheapest one I can find sold, and I mean the cheapest, is 220 pounds. The dearest sold 800 pounds. I'll splice in the images for this coffee grinder and it's in good condition. It's sort of that mid-century teak sort of uh, look to it. I gotta clean this chrome up and I tell you what, again, another website item. And it's nice to have that good crisp stamp on the base because the ones I looked at all mourned about the stamp being worn and dirty. But there it is, number, model number 531 for a coffee grinder. Spectacular one. Next we had a group of Border Fine Arts figurines. Now I really don't rate these, however they come in as the job lot, £600 for the job lot remember, and they do sell, but I don't like them. But they are what they are. Um, I'll probably put them in the shop here to be honest, I'm not going to waste my time putting them online and that. They're quite a pleasant looking thing, they're boxed, and they're probably going to go out for about £15 a piece. So I got three. I don't know what the other two are. I haven't opened them. I didn't even look. But in their boxes, in good condition, £15 each is another £45 back. They're going to sell for that with my eyes closed. 
Um, I don't even need to look on eBay at the prices. Border Fine Arts, in their box, pretty ornaments, £15 each. They're going to walk out the door and they are good little shop fillers. So these three are going to go in the shop. <coughs> We've had another spectacular one. <laughs> You're going to think it's nothing now when I show you this. Look how small that is. Now, before we get into it, what would you pay for something that small? Bear in mind, look how small it is. I need my glasses on for this. I'm going to try and pronounce it. Nut Ajarvi. Uh, made in Finland. Now, this isn't to be um, confused with the Italia toika birds this is um, a different one altogether this is earlier it's come from Finland it's mid-century uh, the bird is a flycatcher it's fully signed on the underneath you can see it all there now he knew what he was selling me and this made up a good portion the train stuff this everything it all added in a reasonable money um, I think this come in as something like a hundred pounds paid maybe just over by the time you work out everything I've had. So it hasn't come in cheap. And this is like a three, four inch bird. However, I've looked online and I'll splice in some images again for you. They sell between two and a half hundred and four and a half hundred pound for this size bird of this type of bird. I know you would not think that. Size isn't everything. Rarity is. These are really, really rare, especially in the red with the green beaks and things like that. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of varieties because these birds are not easy to find the flycatchers But I'll show you the same make same size birds um, And a couple of varieties and you'll see some are four five hundred quid even in auction They're achieving two and a half three hundred pound in Katowicki. Um So they're really really good money So again, this one's probably going to be going for about 300 350 pounds on the website. I know as shocking as that sounds uh, With all the signatures and everything. This is a really early example of what they are and the full script signature you know that in itself is enough it's a rare little beastie <laughs> come in a little nest so that I absolutely adore so I'm actually finding stuff for the website and that is my biggest goal to be honest so I've got the um, plastic uh, battleship kit to on the website, the coffee grind is going on the website, the bird is definitely going on the website. Sorry about that, got cut off. So yeah, the only things left other than that really, I got the Hornby and Triangle stuff that's going into the auction and the Border Fine Arts that's go uh, going in the shop. But I'm not done by a long, long way. He pulls out this. Now I've done no research on it, I haven't even looked at it yet. I'm going to look at it in a minute. And if I find that it's worth money, I'm going to splice it in. Now this is a book by W. Graham Robertson, um, a Masque of May Morning. Okay, now it looks like very much like a Toulouse the Trek image at the front and that. Now, if you open it up, on the front there is a label, Mary Gray Bonham Carter. And apparently they looked it up because this was part of his collection and that is the great grandmother of Helena Bonner Carter, you know, the actress. I don't, I can't confirm it yet, but apparently that's what he said. And to be honest with you, I take him at his word. He's pretty honest um, as they go. Now, the book is in lovely condition. And it's full of these early prints. And they are, they remind me so much of the Toulouse-Lautrec images. They really do. And it is full of them. So I'm going to look this book up. To be honest with you, you could cut every one of these out and frame them up. They are that good. They look spectacular. And they, every other page has got pretty much got an image in it. I don't want to wet my fingers to open the pages. Okay. So this got real potential. 
I don't know a second as to how much it's worth. You'll probably know before me know, well, you won't, but I'm gonna splice it in. I'm gonna do some research on it, see what I can find. The reason I didn't look it up is because I forgot I added it. I just found it in the box now as I was filming. So that's the only reason I haven't done the research on this one yet. But if that is Helena Bonacarta's uh, grandmother or great-grandmother, then potentially this is a really interesting book. Now looking at this, see this discoloration here? Now that could be one or two things. It could be nothing at all or it could be there was a really nice print on the front of this and somebody took it off and framed it up already uh, but again i'm gonna have to find that out from doing more research um but it's a really nice book in really good condition this plastic coating over is just to protect it the book itself is in almost mint condition a little bit of bumping down on the corner there but a really nice looking book i can see that being worth money i really can so we're gonna look that one up and i'll splice in some uh pictures hopefully i'm hoping it's worth a couple of hundred pound and it's another website i've done but i think it is moving on i have had a bag full of art and when i say a bag full of art listed artists and all we'll start with this one this was my favorite we have a date dated 19 1975 limited edition number seven of only 50 ever made by noel gable and it's entitled mushrooms so it's basically mushrooms chopped up on like a cutting board very modernist print 1970s um it's got a really good look to it now i know what you're thinking it's a picture of mushrooms, really. It's a limited edition engraving, not a print. If you want to know the difference with an engraving and a print, if you look around here, can you see the impressed square? It runs all the way around. Now that is where they've had the square plate and they've really pressed it down onto the paper to print this off or an engraving then, if you like. So this is an actual engraving as opposed to a print, a modern print anyway and she's a Cornwall artist and sells in galleries and I have found her work in the galleries for three and a half hundred pounds there's none of her work on eBay and none of her work been on eBay so guess what that's another website item if I chuck two 250 on it they, I'll show you the one they're asking three and a half hundred for in the gallery and this is in mint condition and everything's wrote on the back Mushrooms, number 7 of 50, 1974 slash 75. To John, with best wishes for your new... Something, 2018. Ah, your new life in Wales with Nick, Noel and DL. So this has actually been gifted off the artist. In 2018, and they've sold it on, obviously. But I actually really do like that. So... Nice bit of modern art there. Next we have a really nice bit of silk work. Now this is needlepoint with silks. And look at that beautiful image of the uh, mother and daughter there. The quality of that stitching is superb. The frame is nice too. It's got enough wear on it to uh, make it look just about right. Oval frame, quality on this is spectacular. Now it's wrote on the back. Andy Kate's work given to Mimi by Majority Carter in 1982. Now I believe it was gifted in 1982, not created in 1982. Looking at that, I would say that is much earlier, probably 1940s or something like that. But the work is spectacular. Really is quite something. And again, I believe that is good enough for the website again. The quality is there and the silk work is beautiful. The good thing about most of this work is the artists are already attributed on the back so I haven't got to do the work and a lot of them are listed artists or known artists. Now here we have a mid-century modern uh, painting or acrylic, I'd say acrylic. Now what does it look like to you? I'll read the description. 
it's a seascape. So apparently it's got the waves and everything splashing down on the surf. Yeah, that's got to be the way it hangs. Um, it's dated, oh, it was framed in 2001. And it is by Beatrix Bryan, Byron, Bridge House High Street, Hampstead, which is all on the back here. That's just a really funky bit of modern art. I actually like it. I haven't looked it up yet. Um, I just like this sort of abstract art is quite nice. Um, what it's worth, I haven't got a foggiest idea till I do some research on that one. This one here almost looks like a homeless man. It's quite unusual. I don't know if you can see that there. It is signed. It's nothing wrote on the back at all. Um, it's a watercolour. Something Booth. I'm going to have to look that up. The artist's name is listed there. Um, but I'm struggling to read it. But that's one to look up. But it's quite an interesting image, to be honest with you. Anyway, um, interesting. Don't know the value yet, but just a decorative uh, picture nonetheless. And quite an interesting one with the uh, what looks to be a homeless man or a drunk man sat down, something along that nature. So this one here is a Scottish soldier in his dress, literally, <laughs> uh, or in his uniform then, let's put it that way. Um, there's some writing on the reverse, but uh, I can't make it out. I'll have to have a good look at it at a later stage. It's got some age, it's just a really nice, unusual military photograph. I'm assuming photograph. It's too good to be a watercolour or anything, it's got to be a photograph. Um, just a nice example. Just unusual. I would think that's probably, if it is a photograph, which it looks like, it's probably 20 or 30 pounds, just as a decorative piece. Phil Bullock or something like that. We have a, just a nice little uh, watercolour here of some boats docked in front of the house. Just a nice little image. Now if you've got a cafe or anything like that on the waterfront then these are good for that. And it is a Sea Mills Harbour watercolour by Phil Bullock. Um, well there you go. He was asking £75 for that one on his own. So, the work's already done for me, and if they were asking 75, I can ask 75. There's no reason for it not to be. This one here I'm devastated with. On the back, they have the original receipt from Stable Gallery. It's a watercolour. Uh, £235 they paid. The artist is there, everything is a listed artist. This is a listed artist uh, painting. Uh, dated 1913, Chris H. Branstable, by the looks of it, or something like that. Brands, oh, something along them lines. But the downside with it is it's foxed. It's got fox in over it all. Not nasty, enough I suppose to give it a bit of look and age, uh, but it is foxed all the way through. Um, Yes, Chris H. Branscombe or something like that. I'm going to have to really get an eyeglass on there, but it's on the back here, what it is, the, the name of the painting and everything. It's all matched in, £235 um, in 1994. That's what they paid for it. So I'm not 100% what I'm going to charge for that yet because of, because of the foxing. If it wasn't because of the fox in, it'd already be on the website. Okay, moving on, it's just a few more pictures left. Ronda, Rona, Rona Cowell. 
we have another watercolour. Again, looks a bit uh, mid-century modern. Not sure where this place is. Big cathedral lay in the background. Barona Cowell. They're just nice decorative bit, you know, paintings. And there's a couple there, obviously, that are listed artists and that, uh, that are going to put money. And this one is going to be good enough for the website as well, looking at this. Now, I need to get an eyeglass on it, but it's Kenneth Hobson, 1931. Now, the place is illustrated there in the centre, St. John's Gate. Um... Handship something, I can't read that last bit, but this is quite spectacular. You've got the flag up here flying, it lo almost looks like the inside of a castle. Um, again, it's an engraving, absolutely beautiful quality. I love the quality of that. Um, it's come from the John Russell Art Gallery, so it's come from a um, proper gallery, so somebody's paid good money for it. I think that's good enough for the website again. A really, really nice engraving. I'll double check where it is. I'll get all the information and I'll give it a really good write up on the website. But again, I think that one's going to be probably three figures again, £100 or so. Okay, this one's a bit, um, this looks a bit acrylic or chalk. It's signed Collins. Nothing on the back. Just a little small sailboat, maybe a little one-man boat. Interesting little thing, but I don't rate it that highly. However, it'll go in the shop here as a decorative piece, and somebody may identify the artist and know a lot more than me. Because pictures and paintings is such a massive area. You know, you, you can know the main artists, but there's no way you're going to know every artist there is unless you're an art specialist. Um, and dealing art daily, which I don't. However, I've got two, four, six, eight, eight paintings or engravings and one silk work that I think will pull me absolutely decent money. There's two or three in here. I think I'm going to pull back about five or six hundred pound off the pictures in total. Okay, so here's the other piece I've had. It's a African carved <laughs> totem pole, if you like. Um, it can be turned into anything you want, I suppose. It's all carved out of hardwood. I don't know if it's missing like a bowl off the top or whether or not it's ready to be made into a lamp. But this is standing at about five foot tall. Really nice thing. I think they play in the drums or something, it looks like. Now, if you got an African carved figure like this, just one of these figures, you know, it's normally 20, 30 quid for a figure. And I got one, two, three, four, four figures in a stand that you can turn into a lamp. So I would think that's probably 75 quid, 100 pounds, something like that. So that's about it for the haul. I think you'll agree that there's some really nice rarities there. Absolutely stunning gems, to be totally honest with you. The little mid-century bird, spectacular. The battleship, spectacular. A couple of the engravings. Uh, in there, amazing. The coffee grinder, the silk work I love, the book's got real potential, I don't know where that's going yet, probably end up on the website. All in all, 90% of what I've bought is good enough to go on the website. So is the train set, believe it or not, all these train parts. I could do a job lot of that for a dealer or collector and put up three, four, five hundred pounds and they'd probably buy it. But it's the shipping because there's 10 big crates and shipping it would be an absolute nightmare and if i say local collection then it's really limiting me because you can't drive over six miles at the moment i'll leave it there hope you've enjoyed guys thanks for watching
Bye for now.